If you relax, like we talked about, and don't yeah. tense up too, yeah, it's grip. me. Why are you doing it? Why so tense? It's me. <laughs> <laughs> they don't want me to do, be doing little jokes. <laughs> you can tell coming. Uh, no. I am a student of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, also known as BJJ. Even after three, four, God, is it five years? I still consider myself a beginner and a proud wearer of a blue belt. In this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about what I've learned from BJJ, five things in fact, and five aspects of BJJ that could make the world a better place. But if you're gonna do a YouTube video about BJJ, why would you not include the foremost online voice in this space, Joe Rogan? There's a lot of people that they learn how to deal with life through the struggle of jiu-jitsu because the struggle of training is so much harder than most of the struggles that you face in your daily life. It makes you more accustomed to dealing with uncomfortable Man. positions. I recognize what Joe Rogan is saying there and the time that it became most obvious to me was one time when I was choked out in a guillotine choke by someone that I thought I was about the same level as. In jiu-jitsu, there are many, many philosophies and ideas that are not at the forefront, but seem to me to be present in practice, i.e. it's literally hierarchical because of the belts. It's a culture of respect. It's quite ceremonial. You line up at the beginning, you bow to the masters, like, you know, pictures of the founders, Helio Gracie being but one. Just in case you don't know, BJJ, as it's known, is a grappling wrestling martial art that sort of originated in Japan, but as the name suggests, went via Brazil and is now practiced the world over and reached prominence in many people's minds, eyes, consciousnesses, when uh, the Gracie family began the sport of UFC, mixed martial arts, where fighters from different disciplines would get involved in combat, like, like someone that's an expert in karate would fight someone who's an expert in kickboxing, a wrestler would fight a BJJ practitioner, and BJJ proved its dominance. The first four UFCs were won by Hoist Gracie, and this sort of established the supremacy of BJJ as a martial art. And as the Gracie brothers, Hiron and Hena, told me that the BJJ argument was then won. Now, at this point, anyone who is a mixed martial arts fighter has to have BJJ as part of their game. It's like part of the standard. I became fascinated in it because of Joe Rogan. When I went on his podcast one time, hearing him talk about it, I felt like, yeah, this is the martial art. I've always known that martial arts would be part of my uh, awakening and my coming into my own adulthood because I guess I felt somewhat disembodied, like I didn't have a positive relationship with my um, physical body other than really through sexuality. And like, through BJJ, I learned to have a different type of physical awareness. It can be really, really intimidating and really, really scary, but it's ultimately beautiful. The first lesson I suppose I learned was humility. You've got to put on that little outfit, the white gi, the little pajamas and a white belt that if you're anything like me, you'll be wearing for an awful long time. And then you have to learn something that seems so sort of, well, for me at least, unnatural. I've got no background in football or uh, boxing or anything that would be applicable, you know, like so, or rugby or anything like that. So like for me at first, I didn't even want the close physical contact of another male. I didn't want another male's stubble on my face. I don't want to feel breath against me. I don't want to feel someone else's weight on me. But after a while, this became kind of incredible. As they say in Jiu Jitsu, you get comfortable being uncomfortable. The psychological applications of that are obvious that sometimes you're being held in the BJJ position and you just have to get used to it. You just have to accept that that's happening and like that it will pass, that it will be over at any time. This leads to another point, surrender. Like that at any moment, if a choke or a submission, like arm bars, chokes, etc., is becoming too much, you can tap and your partner will let go. This really increases and enhances the sense of community. Many times I've questioned that if I'd have started doing this earlier in life, a few things would have been different. I think I'd have had a different relationship with my body, a different relationship with men, and possibly uh, I would have explored homosexuality in my life at some point because the number of male crushes that I've developed over the course of it, here on Gracie, out of the Gracie brothers, I'm sort of, <laughs> I just find myself like staring, like when I'm meant to be fighting them or whatever, going, 
He's a bit of a dreamboat, isn't he? I suppose a lot of men struggle with what being a man is supposed to be about. There's a lot of images and suggestions and ideas about maleness, a lot of talk of male toxicity and stuff. Well, being in a situation where men are encouraging to one another and the fact that when you tap, it's over. And then after the end of the fight, little hug or this kind of slap thing you do, and then on you go. It's sort of beautiful. BJJ2 tells you important things about community. When I got my blue belt, I attended a ceremony where lots of other people got their blue belts and black belts and brown belts and people were called out one by one. There were people from all different kind of ethnic and social backgrounds. And in that situation, in that context, the only thing that mattered was what belt you got. And everyone was encouraging to you, no matter what belt you got, people of all different guys, like everyone was just getting on in this shared context. I felt like even though the rules of BJJ are to a degree a contrivance, even though it's a contrivance based on efficiency and excellent and maximum ability, also it creates tribalism it creates a sort of a, a, a situation where we're safe to not in covid of course but under usual circumstances touch one another the familiarity of that i like imagine in early hominid existence how much physical play would be part of our development you need only look at how animals roll around and wrestle and fall around with each other to establish dominance hierarchies but also to establish rapport and affection and love with one another. It sort of brings something to the surface that is otherwise latent and dormant. I learned as well that, uh, you know, for pretty basic things that I'm capable of doing quite sort of strong things with my body. I'm capable of exerting pressure, of protecting myself, but also that you don't know what you're dealing with just by looking at someone. You don't know who you're encountering. It made me less likely, I think, to be sort of confrontational or rude in a sort of a street. It made me sort of think about de-escalating confrontation situations. It created a real sense of fraternity. Some of these people that have taught me, like my uh, teacher, Chris Clear, uh, like Hiron and Henna Gracie and Professor Ricardo, feel like deep affection and respect for these people. You know, like because there's a sort of sense that you're in this situation that is very, very intense and pressuring, but they're teaching you. They're teaching you how to deal with stuff. And it's kind of like being dominated in that way. It can be very frustrating, but you've got to let go. You've got to accept your limitations. You know, it brings things to the surface, I believe, and like Joe Rogan was saying there, that otherwise would remain latent. You know, I'm a sort of person who could be made to feel insecure because someone shouts something out a car window at me. But if earlier in the day someone's tried to choke me unconscious, I have a different way of looking at that, a different context. I also, for a lot of people I know, think are sensitive to the potential threat of violence. Well, knowing that, you know, under no circumstances should you initiate a violent altercation, having that as a principle is really, really brilliant. But knowing that were one to take place, you have a series of suggestions and methods that are relevant in that context. It, I think it de-escalates the likelihood of violent confrontation. With life experience and developing confidence and understanding of who you are and why you had those feelings and why you were insecure and why you had so much self-doubt, Martial arts helped me with uh, with that tremendously. I think like with Joe Rogan, you can see how martial arts is in his body and in his manner. He's a person who talks from a place of kind of gentle, quiet certainty and with a, a degree of acceptance that people are going to have differing opinions about him. And I think that much of his success comes from the stability that he's doubtlessly learned, according to his own testimony, from being involved in that discipline. I think that's why he has such respect and authority in certain communities as well, because he's a person that's been through a number of initiations and processes who can speak from clear authority, who's willing to listen to people from a variety of different backgrounds who has apologised when he's erred. I think many of these principles are kind of embodied and inhabited in the martial arts world. So many other fascinating things about it as well, though. Like, you know, you don't... Like, I was thinking then, oh, next time I go on Joe Rogan, were that ever to be the case? I was thinking, oh, maybe I would roll with Joe Rogan, you know, who's like a black belt and a badass. Like, but you don't ask someone who's got a higher belt than you to roll. It's against the protocols. It's like, you know, like the age of innocence or like being in Victorian London or something. Sir, did you just ask for a jewel with that brown belt? Yes, yes, I did. 
<laughs> like it's like there's protocols in place. Literally at the beginning of every lesson, you sort of run around in a, you line up and go hoos and bow, and then you sort of run around the room doing what are ostensibly the warm up drills for like shrimping and bridging and all these things. But you're all doing it as a group. It's like you're being hypnotized into one sort of body. Then you pair up and demo the various different moves, like an escape from half guard or some other little bit of jargon. Someone the other day here on Gracie called me, go, Russell. What method would you use? If you have someone in an arm bar, what are you gonna do to complete that arm bar if they're locking their hands? I step back, uh, hello, here on, um, I suppose what I'd do is I would use the foot maybe on the uh, bicep to try and unlock it, or, and I didn't add this, my teacher, Chris, later told me, you know, use my wrist to sort of apply pressure. Then he, like a few days later, goes, no, the best thing to do is nothing. Do nothing in this situation and wait to see what your opponent does. Because if I'm on the button, I'm waiting for them to make a move. And even with all the work I do on psychiatry, therapy, 12 step stuff, meditation, all of these things are about self-awareness. I realized the importance of embodied therapy, of coming back into your body, not living entirely in a speculative and reflective place, being able to be in the body. And BJJ is perfect for that because there are struggles, there are confrontations, there are challenges, things that pass, there are moments of opportunity that you squander because you're too excited. It's kind of a real microcosmic. Furthermore, I don't spend any time thinking there. I'm in, it creates a flow state and I'm you know, very much at the beginning of my journey and it still though puts me into a place of like where I'm in some kind of inner and anatomical harmony. It was the first thing that I ever did where I didn't feel like a loser. Mm. It's like the first thing that I ever did where people like respected me and they liked me for it. You know, I'm like, wow, this is like something. It was a feeling that I was completely unused to in the 14 previous years of my life. All of a sudden, there was this this feeling that I was unusual. I was unique. I was special. Wow. Who was that smart guy saying, "Wow, there." We need to hear more from him. That humbling is very good for you, you know? I mean, I, I don't know how many times I've been tapped out in my life, but it's probably more than a thousand. It's probably, yeah. probably thousands. So, so far, acceptance of being in difficult situations, humility of knowing your own limitations, confidence, knowing what you're capable of and the potential for improvement that me, a person that was very uncomfortable in those kind of situations, has become relatively speaking, quite comfortable, still a long way to go, but confidence has improved. Vulnerability, the knowledge that we remain vulnerable and that that, that in a sense relates to humility. The necessity for respect, that we should treat all people with respect, not just on the basis of they might be some badass black belt, but simply because we're in a community, we're in a group, and when those relationships are lived out through combat, in sparring or rolling as it's colloquially known, you have a physical experience of someone. Like I've learned that when I'm rolling with someone of any sex or gender that feels like they're less physically strong than me, perhaps because they're younger or whatever, like that I like sort of amend and adapt what I'm doing the same way as I would anticipate other people that uh, have different abilities or greater abilities than me would adapt what they're doing. You know, people don't fly each other. There's a sort of dance to it. There's an acceptance. Different, I imagine, when it's done at a competitive high level. Of course, those things have to be dispensed with. But I'm talking about as a member of a community, as a member of a club. It brings up values and systems that are necessary. It's a closer replication of the conditions we're evolved for than living in a tower block where you never speak to anybody or living in a street where you don't know your neighbors or living in a remote house. Community, the lived experience of being in a community, of knowing who you are and where you are and what you're good at and where you can learn and being able to rely on the support of other people and knowing that you're not the same as other people and conflict is possible and conflict resolution is possible. These are all principles that I think could change the world, that could be harvested, harnessed, uh, in order to bring about more cohesive social abilities. I'm a father of young children. Martial arts and specifically Brazilian Jiu Jitsu will definitely be part of what they do. Like, I'm, if they're into it, I mean, I'm gonna force them for Christ's sake, but I'm introducing them to it as soon as it's safe and uh, prudent to do so. You wanna go out there? gonna do it. Yeah, you wanna get his guard? You're gonna I'll, do it. I'll, I'll talk to the principal here. I did an episode of my podcast, Under the Skin, with uh, Hiron and Henna Gracie, the famous Gracie brothers, part of the Gracie dynasty. And uh, here's a moment where we 
demoed a series of moves. I've not looked at it since then, so my, like, forgive me, I might have an interesting reaction. And Russell will be doing it with you. Where am I in this situation? Slide in the bottom of the guard right here. I'm taking off my West Ham socks. I don't yes. dishonor that football club. Yes. Whipping off those little socks, dealing with these two martial arts masters under the shadow of the great Helio Gracie. What would someone do in your position who knew nothing right now? They're panicking, they're panicking, they're protect the their head. face, and he don't just drop bombs through the cage, oh around the corner, in the body. You're gonna eventually get opened up and get knocked out from here. This Terrible. is actually, for most people watching, this is actually worst case scenario. <laughs> Enthusiastic about a worst case scenario. So stage one is when Russell, have him wrapped up, get inside and hug his head, Russell, the head and arm control that we talked about. Yeah, wrap that arm and you're here. This is called stage one. And then if let's say we're here and he don't start trying to pull body punches, bring your knee inside Russell and that's stage two, other knee. So now he's blocking punches at the second stage of protection. I like the acting that Heron's doing. It's good for me to seek comfort in the areas of life where I am more accomplished. If he don't sits up and he's on his chest rust, look at that, he's blocking now at stage three. Now he don't can't reach punches from there because he's too far. And if he stands up, stage on the feet on the hips, this is called stage four. So with all these stages, you notice that how he don't never at the range to knock you out. Now even in the time, year or so man, since you look at that, no social distancing, no masks, even in the time that's lapsed since then, I've become much more confident and competent with Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu practice. I'm looking now and thinking my legs shouldn't have been straight like that. Oh no, I've got that position one could do with some work. And then from there, punch, punch, let him back in, rush, wrap his head up, and he's back to stage one. So it's a cycle. And you can go from stage one to stage three. Sit up to three, right there, knees on his or chest, one. look. Or four, direct, punch, punch, let him back in, boom, boom. And he pulls him back down. So to be able to, man, and what happens throughout all these exchanges, he's burning energy trying to hit you. That's right, I've got him exactly where I want him. And you're just managing the distance so he can't knock you out. So he's exhausting while you're preserving well, energy. Well, I'm having a lovely cuddle. If you <laughs> relax, yes. I'm trying to drag it towards comedy, another area where I'm comfortable. You bring your knee inside, so that's where you push his arm away and bring your knee inside his arm. Slowly, yep, shin comes in. Now slide to his wrist here, boss. Now pull your leg out and around his neck. Beautiful, cross that leg, get the arm across. Shove his arm over, now grab his head and lock your legs up nice and tight there. Squeeze your thighs together, grab your shin, tight thighs, everything squeeze now and pull your head down, pull his head down. Thighs, yes! Six seconds Victory. and he's gone. Even that is a sort of a quite a lovely situation, I think, for men to be in, being physical with each other, learning an encouraging environment, using our bodies. I think it's a very sort of sweet, comfortable environment. Now, I recognise there are different levels of it where it becomes extremely... <laughs> tense and difficult and let's face it violent but the fact is is that at the level of learning and practice it's a sort of collective activity that is very very inclusive and where i've experienced it and where i've been taught and practiced it i've had a real sense of community and coming together and shared values it's been very, very beautiful. I think no matter what your background is, or whether you're comfortable with uh, physical violence, or if you have experience of it, or if you have trauma around it, or whatever sex or gender you are, I think it's something you can learn from. I think there are beautiful values at play here. I'm very uh, grateful that it's become part of my life. I'm very grateful to all the people that have ever taught me, and I'm very excited about continuing this journey and continuing it with my family and I recommend it's something that you try too. If you've enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, turn on the notification bell if you can stand to. Please comment, I come back and answer a lot of these comments and please sign up to my mailing list on russellbrand.com. It's not a mailing list, it's, a, it's an elite, it's a cabal, it's a, an exclusive club, we're a collective, we're a, a dojo of the mind and body. It, it is a mailing list, sign up and let me know what you would like to see me talk about and let me know if you've enjoyed this video. Thank you. Mm-hmm.